Oh, good morning, my friends. Say hi. Good morning. So, <clears throat> every day, millions of men from around the world, um, men, women, and children, ask me how it is that I make my bulletproof coffee. They also ask what I study and what I read and how it is that I've come to have such a keen intellect. That was good, huh? keen intellect. Really so, I did sound really smart. So I decided to, to share with you this morning how it is that I make my bulletproof coffee every single morning and study and, and, and obtain such a keen intellect. So literally I, I've put together, this is not a baking show, this is not a cooking show. Paula, is it Paula Dean? Paula Dean, I'm not coming for your job. Rachel Ray, you can keep doing your thing. Uh, although I wouldn't be surprised if the Food Network reaches out after this because I'm really damn good at what I do. But I'm going to share with you how I make my bulletproof coffee and, and, a, and a little nugget that I learned this morning while I was studying. So first things first, my friends, you're going to need some good coffee. Now I chose this because of the name, Kicking Horse Kick-Ass. It's sweet, it's smoky, and it's audacious. Just, just like me. Just like me. So what I do, my friends, is I get a little teacup. I'm not going to sing you the song. But I boil the water. I use my French press here. Here's the ingredients that you're going to need. Some good coffee, some good organic coffee, some Irish butter, some grass-fed Irish butter, a little bit of liquid sweetener, and some maca. What you'll do here, you'll go ahead and pour a little bit into the old magic bullet. No, it's not a sex toy. Do you think there's, there's sex toys called magic bullet, dear? Oh, why don't we have one? Maybe we'll get one. And then I take, I can't do two things at once here, but then I take a, a fairly sizable chunk of butter. Let me show you how big a, a sizable chunk of butter is. This is about the size of chunk of butter that I'll use. I might go ahead and I put it here in my coffee. Throw that in there. Throw a little, uh, Throw a little squirt of maca in there. Now, if you don't know the benefits, this is more for men than it is for anything else. Fellas, trust me when I tell you. Can I get an amen? Amen. Fellas, just look it up and you'll understand why. It will help you. And then I just throw one little squirt of the, uh, the sweetener in here. But fellas, you really should get yourself some maca and throw it in the, uh, throw it in your coffee in the morning. Throw the top on, ah, oh, son of a bitch. I knew that was gonna happen. I just spilled the goddamn coffee because I was trying to do two things at once. Well, I'm gonna finish. This is how we do it on the okay. show. I'm just gonna We're not gonna stop. Down. We're gonna keep going. See, I got coffee all over the place. This is real world shit, my friends. It's dangerous. I fucking spilled the coffee <laughs> on live national TV. I bet you Paula Dean did that once. Rachel Ray did that once. Babe, can you clean this up one more time? <laughs> then you go ahead and throw it in your, you have to have a cool mug with your girl who's holding a gun. Throw it in your, uh, your mug and then walk away from the mess. Just walk away. What's really funny, friends, this is the second time that I've spilled my coffee this week. I'm trying to multitask. So there you have it. Live? Thanks, babe. Was that embarrassing for you? No, it's funny. God almighty. Now I got coffee all over my phone. Yeah, I'll come back and get it in a sec. I got I to gotta finish, finish the show here. So you throw it in your mug. You spill the coffee. God bless America. That's how you make Bulletproof, and it's really delicious. So I wanted to share with you guys, since uh, over the last three and a half years, I've shared over... 950 morning insights. These morning insights were little nuggets that uh, I got from my morning study and I decided it was time for a change. So I'm officially retiring the morning insight. There will never be another morning insight. What's done is done. It's served me well. Many people don't know this, but I didn't do this to put it out there. I didn't put this out there to put, put these messages out there to try and teach people, educate people. I did these actually as a, as a challenge from my coach, my mentor, because I had been sharing, I got coffee all over my phone. 
I had been sharing a lot of rubbish after my divorce, a lot of stupid crap that was not helpful to me, that was not helpful to other people. And um, at the end of the day, I just uh, I started doing them for myself. And over 950 of them, three years I did them. And so we're going to have a, uh, we're putting together um, all of these morning insights in a format where people can read them. But they're officially done. So I am no longer going to be doing little insight from morning study. Instead, I'm going to start sharing live with you every morning here. Hopefully you enjoy it. As you can see from the shenanigans that just happened, if you're just joining, you should jump on and watch what I did at the beginning of this because it was freaking mayhem. That's what happens. Nothing's perfect, my friends. Thanks, babe. See, I bought you these flowers. See, when you buy, when you buy her flowers, she cleans up your mess for you. So, here's the deal. I'm going to share with you my insights live every single morning. If you like them, cool. If you don't like them, cool. But I'm sharing them simply because, one, I love to continue to study. I love to continue to read. I love making coffee in the morning. I love having conversations with you guys. And I think it'd be fun for us to be able to have a conversation in the morning, not only about the books, but about the Bulletproof. I'd love to give some shout outs to some coffee companies uh, based off of coffee. I love coffee. I'm a big coffee guy and I love to spill it, as you can see, on the floor. So check out the ingredients. It's really good for you. It's good for your brain. It's good for your body. The Irish butter, the uh, organic coffee, so on and so forth. But every morning I'm going to share with you some coffee and I'm going to share with you a little insight, a little nugget that, uh, that I got from my study. So this morning I've been studying. I'm going to turn it around so you can see it so it's not backwards. Think and Grow Rich. I've read this book probably 10 times. I don't even know. Probably more. Uh, probably more times than that. And the way that I study, I don't read cover to cover. I don't think I've read a book cover to cover in 10 years. I've got books all over my house. So every morning it'll probably be a different book. It'll probably be a different nugget, but that's the way that it goes. And some mornings I'll get hooked on a book and it'll be two or three days in a row. But what I, when I study, I look for a little nugget. I don't look for, I don't read just to read. I don't read for a half an hour just to say that I got my half an hour reading in. I might read one page and all of a sudden, bing, the light goes on. I'm like, holy shit, I didn't know that. So this morning I was reading, I want to share with you a little insight that hit me that I really, really appreciate. It's Think and Grow Rich. We're in chapter uh, seven, organized planning. And I just typically flip something open and I'll start reading. And this is the, the title of this, this, this section is how to get the exact position you desire. It's talking about a job, how to get the exact job that you desire. And what's really funny is this hit me because... Um, with lions not sheep and in my coaching, I coach my clients um, to go from hunting with a shotgun to hunting with a rifle to become a sniper. Now what that means is that any of you that understand hunting, you know you don't go deer hunting with a shotgun because a shotgun spreads out your bullets, so on and so forth. You shoot birds with it and, and, and it's not what you use. Babe, the dogs are freaking out. Do you know why? They, uh, they, you, you go shoot and you hunt with a rifle. You become very specific. So what I like to teach my clients is to become very specific, to start hunting with a rifle and becoming a sniper and getting exactly what you want, saying exactly what you want, doing what you, exactly what you want. And that's why this was prevalent to me this morning and made the light go on. I'm like, dude, this is good shit for a Monday morning. Let me read a little bit to you. Everyone enjoys doing the kind of work for which he is best at. An artist loves to work with paints, a craftsman with his hands, a writer loves to write. Those with less definitive talents have their preferences for certain fields of business and industry. If America does anything well, does lots of things well, it offers a full range of occupations, tilling the soil, manufacturing, marketing, and professions. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. This is good shit, my friends, because this is what 99.99% .99 of you and 99.99% .99 of the world, forget just America, don't do. We don't do any of this shit, okay? Which right here in this book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, it's the exact blueprint to be able to lead the life you want to lead do the shit that you want to do and be able to, in essence, have everything that you want to have. First, decide exactly what kind of job you want. If the job doesn't already exist, perhaps you can create it. How many people like say, you know what, I'm really good at this. I want to do this. What kind of job do you want? Most people are like, well, I went to school and let's just throw my application out to 87 different companies and see who's hiring. What job do you want? What exactly do you want to do? I love coaching people. I love using the experience that I have over tens of millions of dollars of business deals, of coaching literally thousands of people all over the world. I love doing it. 
It's what I'm good at. It's what I do. Okay? I decided what I wanted to do. Now, I'm not employed by anybody other than yours truly, but for 99% of the population that actually has a job that works for somebody, this is the recipe. Second, choose the company or individual for whom you wish to work. How many people do that? Nobody does that. They're like, oh shit, well, I need a job doing this, and so who's hiring? And we go to monster.com and all these other job search websites, and we throw our application out to anybody and everybody. What Napoleon Hill's talking about is one, decide exactly what you want to do, and number two, decide exactly who you want to do it for. Number three, study your prospective employer as to policies, personnel, and chances of advancement. Well, let me give you a little quick story on this. I interviewed a girl this week to be my assistant. I'm looking for an assistant right now. And in the ad, in the job, in, in, in the ad, I hired a company who is basically a headhunter. They go out and they find really good people. I'm looking for a really good assistant right now. In the ad, it says that I'm looking for my pepper pots. Now, those of you that have seen the movie Iron Man, you know that pepper pots, in essence, does everything for Iron Man. Knows what he's going to do before he does it, says what he's going to say before he says it, so on and so forth. So I'm looking for, for pepper pots. So as I'm interviewing this girl, I said, so why do you think you should be my pepper pots? I said, what, how are you like Pepper Potts? She's like, well, I don't really know anything about Pepper Potts. I said, what do you mean you don't know? I said, you've seen the movie, right? She said, no, I haven't seen the movie. And I said, well, why wouldn't you have looked at the movie or watched the movie or done some research on Pepper Potts to know who Pepper Potts is, seeing that I'm hiring Pepper Potts? Oh, well, I didn't have time. I said, well, that's fascinating. You applied for this job over two and a half weeks ago, and currently you're unemployed, right? So here's the problem. Number three, study your prospective employer. If you show up at a job interview and you're like, uh, what do you guys do? Yeah, uh, sure, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Versus saying, yeah, I love the Wizmo gizmo gadget that you guys make and I think that it's going to change the world. See the difference? Number four, by analysis of yourself, your talents and capabilities, figure out what you can offer and plan ways and means of giving Advantages, services, developments, ideas that you believe can, you can successfully deliver. Add value. I've said this a thousand billion, majillion, fulfillion, trillion times. Add value. Add value. Add value. By analysis, what talents and capabilities, what can you offer to said employer? Fifth, forget about a quote job. Forget whether or not there's an opening. Forget the usual routine of, have you got a job for me? Concentrate on what you can give. How many people do that? Oh, I need a job. Are you hiring? Are you guys hiring? Oh, no. People don't, good people don't ask if you're hiring. Good people say, here's how I can help you and here's exactly why you should hire me. Number six, once you have a plan in mind, arrange with an experienced writer to put it together and pay perform in full detail, basically a uh, resume. I haven't had one of those in 15 years, but get a good resume. Seven, present it to the proper person with authority, not the freaking receptionist at the front who doesn't give a shit about you because he or she is making $10 an hour just to answer the phones. Present it to the proper person with authority and he will do the rest. Every company is looking for men and women who can give something of value, whether it be ideas, services, or, quote, connections. Every company has room for the man who has a definitive plan of action, which will be advantageous to the company. What do we do? What have we been taught? Get a job, or excuse me, go to school, go to freaking college, get a resume, send it out to 8,000 people, and hope and pray and wait for somebody to call us back. Oh, oh, glorious, I got the best job offer ever. Fuck that. You want it, go get it. Who are you, what do you do good? What can you offer to someone? What can you offer to said company? What value can you present to them? Show them that value. Talk about their company. Talk about why you want to work for them. And then go and show up and say, I want a job, not are you hiring? There's a major paradigm difference between successful people and unsuccessful people. Successful people go out and get what they want. They create it. The very first step that he said, if the job doesn't exist, can you create it? If you have a skill set and there's no job for which your skill set matches with, can you create the job? Think about that for a second. But what do we do? Oh, I got a college degree. Cool, I did an internship for dickhead over here. Oh, yeah, you should hire me. Why? Because look at my resume. It's so great. What the hell are you going to add value to this company? How are you going to do that? Why are you going to do that? Why do you want this? And then be a persistent sniper 
and go out and get exactly what you want. If you're sitting around trying to throw your freaking application everywhere, applying for the Pepper Potts position, and you don't even know who Pepper Potts is, you will never get a good job. You will never grow, you will never advance. If you're just sitting around waiting to be told what to do from nine to five, don't expect to ever become wealthy, and candidly, don't expect to ever become happy, because we as people are not typically happy when we're being told what to do. We like to do what we want to do, and anybody that says that they don't, that they're full of shit. That's it, my friends. So, thank you for sticking with me while I threw my coffee all over the uh, all over the um, kitchen. It's a good nugget this morning. Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. If you haven't read it, you should read it, my friends. Make it an amazing day. God bless America.